Hi everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and today's video is going to be a tutorial based video where I'm going to be showing you how to DC a DCC fitted model which in this case I'm basically converting a DCC fitted model in this case a TTS sound fitted model which is basically DCC fitted into a DC model allowing this model to be able to run on DC now the model I'm using for this video is the Hornby J36 Maud. Now there is also going to be a review on this model, but that video will not be uploaded until after this video has been uploaded. So this video will be uploaded first. However both videos have been filmed alongside each other. So basically at the time of filming this video, I've already filmed the unboxing and the reviewing of the detail of this model. Hence why this model is already out of its box. Now DCC fitted models can work on DC, however they won't run as well. You might find that a DCC fitted model on DC won't work at all unless it has the DCC decoder removed, or in some cases they will work on DC, but they won't run as well. One particular occasion was the Batman Duke dog I have, which was originally a DCC fitted model. and. For it running as a DCC fitted model on DC, it wouldn't run as well basically, and also it wasn't as powerful either. In fact, I had it running around, going in one direction, and without even changing the direction of the controller, it suddenly started running in the opposite direction. I have heard that TTS sound fitted models can work on DC, but I wouldn't like to try it myself, because the chances are you might end up they either won't work and you have to replace the sound module for a blank blanking plate anyway or the sounds might not be as good, they might not work as well as they do on DCC and you probably wouldn't get certain functions either I mean you could say well if you want a model like this why not just go DCC well the thing is DCC is very expensive I mean a DCC controller doesn't come cheap and then there's the decoders as well to buy for the locos. Now, I'd have to buy a lot of decoders because of the amount of locos that I have. And that would cost a bomb. Then there's also the sound modules as well. I mean, I think they usually come to around £30, I think. If memory serves me correctly. And then, of course, there's the price of sound fitted models. Now, you can get some sound fitted models that are cheap such as the majority of the TTS sound range such as this model here which only costs 148 quid so that's not too expensive but you can also buy some TTS sound fitted models that are a bit more expensive such as the HST power cars which come to around the £200 mark and the majority of the sound fitted models as well you know do usually go for around 200 quid and you know, to be honest, I don't plan to ever go DCC. I'm more than happy to just stick with DC because there's nothing wrong with DC. And also, in regards to the sounds, I mean, the sounds are nice, but they don't sound quite as good as the real thing, in my opinion. And that is just my opinion, if I'm allowed to have it. Another thing is that if you have DC and don't have DCC, you might come across a model that you really want like this one, but it's not available as a DCC ready model. I mean, you could wait until the manufacturers brought out that particular model again, but it might be a case that they don't bring that model out again as a DCC ready model, and if they do, it might not be released in this livery. So then the option then is to buy this model and just remove the sound decoder from it and place in a blanking plug so you can run it on DC because there's nothing wrong with buying a DCC fitted model or a sound fitted model and converting it to run on DC because I mean 
you know, people do go out and buy DCC ready models and they put DCC decoders in them or even send modules in them. So, you know, why not go out and buy a DCC model and convert it into a DC model, if that makes sense. Now this video is going to be straightforward, but the reason I'm doing it is because it's, well for a start it's somewhat different to do for the channel. Because I don't very often do many tutorial based videos where people can learn how to do something or learn from it. I mean I will do them every once in a while, but not all the time, so it's nice to be able to go out and do another tutorial video. But also it's for people that are just getting into the hobby and they might not know how to do this. I mean, because there are videos out there that show you how to DCC fit a DCC ready loco, so why not do a video showing you how to DC a DCC fitted loco? Okay, so for this we're going to need a loco cradle of some form. Now, there are some manufacturers out there that do make them. I know, if I remember rightly, I think it's Pico that makes one, and that's one I actually did have, but it got ruined in the end so I had to throw it away but instead of going out and buying another I made one myself which you can do and I've made one out of sponges the only thing is though it does get some dust on the models and so to prevent that from happening and having to dust the models off I've put this tissue paper inside you don't necessarily have to use an alcohol crowd or you could use something like a sponge to rest the model on or some other material but anyway so if we just take the model and we turn it upside down and place it inside the loco cradle like so there we go And so then we get the ever important instruction manual. This is to tell you where the decoder is located. Now these days in tender locomotive models, the DCC decoders and the same modules are located inside the tenders. So all you have to do is to take the tender body off. And there's a drawing here that shows you how to take the tender body off and you have to remove the two screws at the front so that is what we shall do so I've got a cross-head screwdriver because the screws are cross-head ones and I've also got an old food tub here to put the screws into so I don't lose them so there we go out comes the first screw and out comes the second and I'm going to use the tweezers for this just to get this screw out because I haven't done it there we go so now we just have to remove the body which just done clips like so okay so with the tender body removed we now have access to the same module just here you can see that's the decoder and the same module is just in there so we are going to have to take out this part now <laughs> 
because the speaker is under there. We'll just place the screws into that food container tub. Okay, so I think by the looks of it, some more screws are going to have to come out, possibly these ones. Because there's no way this is going to come out otherwise. Didn't think I'd be having to take out these as well, but you know, it has to be done if we were to take out the sound decoder. There almost has to be the one screw, isn't there? is harder to get out than the other because this one doesn't seem to want to come out something we'll have to try a smaller screwdriver there we go So this should now come out. Yep, there we go. So what I'm going to have to do now is to remove the decoder itself from here by carefully, ever so carefully, lifting it out like so. So that's now removed, so what I've got to do now is to just fit this back into place. So I'll now put the screws back in.
There we go. That's one in. And there's the other. Snug as a bug in a rug, as they say. <laughs> so now what I've got to do is find a blanking plate. So I've had a look in my spares box and I found this, which is a blanking plate. I've actually got several in there. This is one of them. And so I'm hoping that this one should fit in the socket there. So excuse me joint fingers but there we are so the blanking plate is now in place now if you're wondering what's going to happen with the sound decoder well it's not going to be of any use to me because I've got no plan to go DCC so I'm not going to be needing it but what I shall be doing is I'm going to be putting this up for sale on eBay so by the time this video has been uploaded this sound module here for the J36 will be up for sale on eBay. So if any of you is interested in acquiring this then you just go to the description and click on the link. So if you already have this model you could buy this as a, as a spare or if you have a DCC ready J36 you could buy this and use that in it or you don't necessarily have to use it in a J36 you could use it in another model if you wish. So this will so this is up for sale and it's not the first time that I've done this with a TTS sound model because my Hornby King that I have was a former TTS sound fitted model and I successfully sold the TTS sound module for that on eBay so you can sell these on and get some Wonga for them Right, so now I'm just going to test this out to see if it runs. Because the last thing I want to do is to put the tender body back on and then come in to run it, only to find out it doesn't work. So we will test this first before we put the tender body back on. And yeah, look at that. It works. So we're now good to put the tender body back on now. But before I do that, I've got to put the screws back in here. So there's one in. Nice and tight. and in goes the other one so those screws are now back in place okay so the tender body is now firmly back on the chassis so now we're going to put the screws back in Sorry if this is taking a bit of time. There we are, there's one. Just making sure the tender's still attached on properly. It is.
So there we are. The screws are now back in place. And the tender's now firmly back on the chassis. Okay, so I've just given the model a dusting down using an old makeup brush. No, I don't wear any makeup. <laughs> I just use them for dusting demi models, it's just a thing that I tend to do with all my models really. So there you are then. That is how you take a DCC model, in this case a TTS sound model, and you convert it to DC. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you with some shots of Maud running on the layout hauling a suburban train. So that brings me on to the end of this video. I hope this video has been some help to you and some use to you should you ever want to do this yourself sometime. As ever, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and check out all my other videos and Stay tuned for more upcoming videos, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.